Whoa. You killed her. How is it so I thought only water could kill the witch foe. I thought so too until that house killed one dead. Then I figured we're carrying guns so I shot her in the head. In the head in the head. How it should have ended. The Wizard of Oz a witch is a magic user. Usually female. Which is a common archetype in most fantasy settings and old myths. They can fit into one of two broad groups. Either being sizzling seductive beauties that will kill you as much as kiss you. The sexy option. Or hunched. Crackling old crones who are like your grandma except the insane kind who might use you in a soup. The scary option. There is rarely a middle ground between the two. Which is usually aligned with the dark forces. Summoning demons. Making curses and hexes. Etc. They can be mysterious and wise and have familiars from cats and snakes to lesser demons. They also tend to fly around on broomsticks. Because traditionally they took drugs vaginally which made them experience flight or transforming into animals. And harbor their magic instead of using it to live the cushy life. God knows why. The traditional method of dealing with witches is to burn them. How to tell if a witch is a witch varies from place to place. From throwing them into a pond to see if they float. If they sink, they drown but at least they are innocent. To weighing them opposite a duck to see if they're made of wood. Traditional gaming has allowed witches to flourish in you in a variety of new forms and identities. Examples of which are given below. Discworld. Witches are a type of mostly rural female magic users on the disc. They're both good and bad witches out there. But one thing that all of them have is a headstrong independent streak a mile wide. They mostly live on their own helping out their villages. They fill a variety of jobs from apothecaries to mediators to defenders against incursions by elves and other such supernatural critters when they cause too much trouble. Witches mostly wear black and pointy hats. Among the witches are some of the most powerful magic users on the disc. But the really good ones rarely use it. Mostly they rely on guile and hodology. Psychology is contrived by a bunch of crotchety manipulative old women to get their way. In this they are similar to yet different from the disquarreled wizards who also know that magic is best used sparingly. There are two distinct sub-series in Discworld that are witch-centric. The Lanka Witches, the older of the two, focuses on a small coven of witches in the region of the Ramtops known as the Kingdom of Lanka. A kind of Scottish Highlands meets Balkans meets Twisted Fairy Tales country. The second sub-series, The Tiffany Aching Stories, revolves around a young shepherd's daughter in the agricultural focused hill country known as the Chalk who discovers that she is a witch and her growing into her role in a region which has been devoid of witches for some time. The Squirreled Witches are often considered to be Terry Pratchett's greatest contribution to feminism in fantasy. Terry himself admitted a significant portion of why he wanted to write the witch-centric books was to contradict the general trend of witchly magic to present it as cheap, nasty and inferior to wizardly magic. Citing such examples as the Earthseer fantasy novels, where weak as a woman's magic and wicked as a woman's magic are common in universe things. Some argue that the Discworld witches have actually been fleshed out and integrated into Discworld society that they make the wizards of the disc pretty much pointless. Dungeons and Dragons 2e Advanced Dungeons and Dragons included a witch as a kit, though more of a borderline variant class. For the wizard in the complete wizard's handbook, the witch is a wizard whose powerful magical abilities are extraplanar in origin. Though wizards typically learn the basics of spellcasting at magic academies or from learned mentors, witches learn magical skills from mentors and their minions from other planes of existence, or from other witches. Occasionally, these extraplanar entities contact youthful humans or demi-humans for magical instruction. Other times, humans and demi-humans seek out the entities through arcane rituals and petition them for instruction. The entities agree to such instruction for a variety of reasons. Some hope to train their students to eventually become emissaries. Some hope to use them as conduits for various forces. Some hope to seduce them as consorts and some simply share their magical secrets for their own amusement. Whatever the motives of the extraplanar entities, they exude a powerful directing influence over their students. However, a few witches with particularly strong wills are able to maintain their own drives while using their magical skills to further their own goals. Such witches face a lifelong struggle with the forces who relentlessly strive to direct their spirits. They need a 13 in int. Whis. 
and conned to keep their bodies and minds resistant to the influence of the beings they work with, and dropping the kit requires a lesser wish or something similarly powerful and the sacrifice of two levels worth of experience, which must be earned back before the witch can get their spell casting back. Ouch. Regardless of her actual alignment, all but her closest friends are likely to presume that a witch is in collaboration with extraplanar spirits and will shun her accordingly. There are few places where a witch is welcome and for the most part, a witch will need to conceal her identity when traveling to assure her safety. Fortunately, the book outright states the witch's party is free to consider them a close friend. Unfortunately, it still recommends suspicious or superstitious characters distrust them a little, with the caveat that the DM should remind them the witch isn't actually evil when it starts disrupting the campaign. A reminder sadly all too lacking in many RPG sources even today. However, staying in one place too long creates a literal mob of torches and pitchfork citizens trying to kill a witch and their patron starts shit with a frequency the DM determines. Either the witch suffers a minus 2 to attacks and saving throws the full moon night, or 7 nights a month on worlds where there are too many moons, the witch has a 25% chance of suffering the same penalty every 12 hours, or the witch suffers a minus 1 penalty to those rolls every night. Although a witch learns her magical techniques from extraplanar entities, once on her own, she learns her spells in much the same way as any other wizard. Still, her techniques for casting spells may differ significantly from the standard methods. The casting times, ranges, and effects of her spells are no different from the same spells used by other wizards, but she may use different verbal, somatic, or material components as well as meditation. These differences should make her seem even more threatening to outsiders, as well as making her seem more remote to the other player characters. Witches don't get or acquire weapon proficiencies, but do get a broad array of useful skills, including herbalism, fortune telling, and other nature stuff. In addition to a few free spells, witches get a number of special powers. They can summon familiars for free without using spells, Brew sleep potions and poisons that can coat weapons, and flying ointments to apply to people, or, spitballing an example here, brooms, save free charm person and or monster, under 8 HD anyway, and the ability to throw out a witch's curse for free, do not save, do not collect $200, the curse will randomly reduce one randomly rolled stat by 3, impose a minus 4 penalty on hit and damage rolls, Blind them for 24 hours or until it gets dispelled. Deal a point of unhealing hit point damage every hour for a day or until it gets dispelled. Or, and this is a 1 stroke 8 chance here, impose temporal stasis, which lasts for a day and instantly kills them when it ends if it's not dispelled first. The witch is among the most complex of all the kits and many of the details are left up to the player's discretion. For instance, he may wish to design specific daily rituals for his witch, or he may wish to expand on the witch's relationship with the entities who originally trained her. What exactly are they? Where are they? Can the witch contact them for favors? What exactly happens if the forces succeed in controlling the witch? Does her alignment change her abilities or relationship to the party? There are many possible variations on the witch kit and the DM is encouraged to experiment, as long as he avoids the temptation to make her excessively powerful, and keeps in mind the potential disruptions in his campaign. Fun to roleplay if the DM isn't a pain in the neck about it. This witch had enough interested fans in the 90s that they actually put together a netbook for it, which you can still find online if you know where to look. Such as right here. 3E. Hallowed Witch 3E JPG A Witch Flavored Prestige Class. The Hallowed Witch appeared in the Dungeons & Dragons 3rd edition update of the Ravenloft setting, where it was one of several prestige classes in the splatbook Van Richten's Arsenal, Volume 1. In many ways a spiritual precursor to the Witch and Pathfinder, the Hallowed Witch was a benevolent variant of the Mystic Theurge, combining arcane and divine magics associated with the Church of Holla. The prestige class required a neutral alignment, 8 ranks in knowledge, Arcana, 4 ranks in knowledge, nature, 8 ranks in spellcraft, the feat spell focus, divination, or spell focus, enchantment, 
and the ability to cast second level spells from both an arcane source and a divine source. The prestige class stacked with base classes for spell casting level and for advancing a familiar. Its primary focus was that it gave the hallowed witch a number of special spell like abilities which it could choose from a list as it gained levels. The Hallowed Witch could also join a coven and work as a team with its coven members to cast more higher level spell-like abilities. 4e. Eva White Rimmon Nostintra JPG Witches were filed under a variant class for the Wizard in Dungeons and Dragons 4th edition in Heroes of the Feywild. This variant class changed quite a bit about the core class. Starting with Augury being a permanent utility spell and automatically gaining Arcane Familiar as a feat alongside your cantrips. This familiar pretty much acts as your spellbook, allowing you to switch dailies or utility powers during an extended rest. Once you reach epic levels, you can also spend an app to regain a spent encounter power and gain combat advantage on the target you spent used that spell on. What really makes it difficult is the choice in covens. Your subclass options. Dark Moon Coven grants training in intimidation and a later boost to both that and stealth. The unique power, Dread Presence, unfortunately also keys off with for the after effects of the power's blast zone. The plus is that at least this punches through resistances to necrotic damage. Full Moon Coven grants training in heal and a later boost to both that and diplomacy. The unique power is Glorious Presence. A power that shoves back enemies with blocks away and gives THP to anyone in the burst range. As anyone can notice, both options aren't very clear on what secondary they want to focus on. Between skills that key off Chai in both despite having a power that keys off Wis more. It's exclusive Paragon Path, the legendary witch, fares little better if not worse due to the inescapable trap option. Most of the features might be passable, but the capstone powers for each coven are polymorphs that trap you between either using a single use power or being forced to use mbass, the thing most wizards pretty much forget exist, bladesinas accepted, because what kind of retard wizard tries punching things in general, it falls into the same problem as virtually every other D&D essentials class ever in that it might be passable at heroic tier, but swiftly becomes crap afterwards. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk. One stop shop for coom jar models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and DND 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeacontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Winter Witch JPG Witches are offshoots of the Wizard class, based on one of the old Wizard kits from the earliest editions of the game. As the Druid is to the Cleric, so is the Witch to the Wizard. They are essentially arcane spellcasters, so no armor, who have to prepare their spells in advance, so no spontaneous casting. But unlike the Wizard, who can only use arcane magic, they have access to a broad spectrum of different kinds of spell, depending on the kind of witch they are, most of which are naturish in origin. The wizard is still more versatile, but the witch can do things wizards can't, like throw out heals and curses that are usually divine magic rather than arcane. This lack of versatility in their spell list means they struggle to be a tier 1 class and can easily fall into tier 2. Even though they can get access to their entire list with prep time. If one of your party members is playing an otherwise op as fuck merfolk, which is are the only way to supply them with potions of fins to feed so they don't slow everyone down. Which is also get access to various unique fairy tale style hexes which range from making poison apples and debuffing your enemies, to making crops wither and grow, to letting your now prehensile hair count as a new limb and flying. The coolest one is probably the one that makes all your hexes last longer so long as you burn a move action to cackle ominously. While few of them work on an unlimited scale, 
Usually, they can't affect the same target twice on the same day, or they can be used for a minute per witch level, spent in 1 minute increments, and while all of them take a standard action to use, this does mean a witch who's clicked dry on spell slots isn't nearly as useless as, say, a wizard in the same situation and they give the class a lot of debuff potential. Witches get familiars like wizards, but there's still their spells like spellbooks. Most familiar are gifts from their patrons, since most witches get their powers from making deals with mysterious natural forces, like a warlock but without the Cthulhu. For this reason, they replenish their spells by communing with their familiars, a phrase that is exactly as perverted as you want it to be. Everyone will hate you for the mental image mind. In the advanced class guide released in 2014, a new class was released. The shaman functions mostly like the witch, with its own unique hexes, and can take lower level witch hexes, but with more emphasis on the familiar's attributes, in this case called the spirit animal, and the spirits that affect it, similar to oracle mysteries, as well as casting divine magic. Second edition was slightly changed to spin off from more things than just a wizard with a better familiar. They are the Pathfinder's version of a DND warlock and the flexibility of picking any spell list at LV1 like a sorcerer via their patrons. Not too much else had changed. You get hexability, meaning your enigmatic patron gives you a familiar and you get more points to customize it and with the proper feats you can make a multi-purpose familiar that gives even familiar thesis wizards green with envy. Your patron has more customization have you can pick lesson feats that give you and your familiar certain spells and focus spells that don't conform to a set spell list. If you're not particularly interested in using hexes in battle, the witch's cackle feat can be defining as it allows a class to sustain one spell as a free action. Putting it all together. This grants the witch a much wilder breath of things it can do compared to other full spell casting classes but not particularly specialized. Warhammer Fantasy There is a whole host of witches within Warhammer Fantasy, scattered over all the different races of the Warhammer world. Mostly the term seems to apply to any sorcerer or mage who hasn't had formal training. Being a rustic magic user or in the terms given above for old crackling hags or dark seductresses. Witch hunters of the cult of Sigma exist to hunt these unstable magic user down before their obsession invites the ruinous power to their surrounding, harming and kill many innocents. The most famous witch in this setting is the Witch King Malekith of the Dark Elves, although his mother is the more the perfect example of the archetype. Speaking of Dark Elves, they have the Witch Elves or its superior version called Witch Hags, who calls themselves the Brides of Cain that engages in daily sacrificial ritual and slaughter with their venom tip dagger in the name of their murder god Cain. One of the known examples of the human side is the Ice Witches of Kiev, who are known for their lore of ice, magic unique to the Kislevite mage. They are the descendants of Khan Queen Miska, the first ruler of Kiev and were inherited her power through blood. Serena Katarina is the current ruler of Kiev as well as being the most powerful ice witch. She is known for banning men from using magic in Kiev because men are yucky. Also there is a prophecy of a man using ice magic will cause Kiev's destruction. A lesser payment over from the end times, Vermintide is an ice witch as well, but mostly specializes in the lore of shadow magic. Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay brought up the witch in the second edition splat book Realms of Sorcery. Here, it's stated that whilst the general peasantry and townsfolk of the empire use witch and warlock interchangeably as a catch-all for evil magic users, the colleges of magic have very specific definitions of the term. A witch is a more powerful hedge mage. One who has grown proficient enough to begin using magic beyond the petty magic level. In fact, witches can be surprisingly powerful, because their homeschooling lacks the elemental mono focus of the imperial colleges, so witches can and often do learn to use spells from multiple different laws. Witches are not considered evil, and in fact it's something of a duty for all college trained wizards to coax and persuade witches to join the college and get formally trained as a wizard just as they do with the hedge mages. On the other hand, a warlock is a witch who has begun using dark magic, sort of an intermediary step between the witch and the necromancer, demonologist, or chaos sorcerer. Whilst not entirely irredeemable, 
Most warlocks are too arrogant or mad to accept the offer to be legitimized through training at the college, and thus must be destroyed. The witch is an advanced career for the hedge wizard featured in realms of sorcery. It grants plus 5% weapon skill, ballistic skill and strength, plus 10% toughness, agility and intelligence, plus 15% willpower and fellowship, plus 4 wounds and plus 2 magic. It comes with the unique talent of witchcraft and the choice of either dark magic or mighty missile as a bonus talent. Its skills are animal handling or intimidate, channeling, charm, common knowledge, any two, gossip, haggle, heal, magical sense, perception, ride or swim, search, and trade. Apothecary or Herbalist. Its trappings are Healing Draft, Healing Poultice, and Trade Tools. Apothecary or Herbalist. And its career exits are Apprentice Wizard, Charlatan, Outlaw, Vagabond or Warlock. The Witchcraft talent allows the Witch to learn spells from many arcane lore at the cost of 200 XP per spell learned with the only restriction being that the witch can only use this talent to learn spells with a casting number of 15 or less. The witch doesn't require the speak arcane language skill to cast the spells learned through this talent, but the witch must roll a bonus d10 for the purpose of seeing if they suffer from Tsinch's curse whenever they cast one of these witchcraft granted spells. If they gain the arcane language and arcane lore talents, all witchcraft spells lose this bonus curse dice. Warhammer 40k Witch in the 40,000 universe is mostly heard when an imperial preacher or inquisitor shouts it's a witch to explain any unexplainable events caused by a person. Even if they are completely blameless. Balan the Emperor's Holy Inquisition never makes a false judgment the Imperium almost uses it like a swear word to label any sicker regardless of race or such. Chaos magicians and sickers are almost always called witches when the Imperium sees them and these fun loonies seem to have no trouble accepting the term. The Dark Elder have witches, although these are not female magic users. These witches are barely clothed, except for leather straps. Gorgeous gladiators that fight for the amusement of the audience and to get a kick out of dominating men by removing their body parts a piece at a time. So basically the sexy witch version minus the magic. To counter the sexism accusations in the most recent Dark Elder Codex it is mentioned there are male witches but they are kept as breeding stock. So yeah. Way to shoot yourself in the foot GW. This is mostly because female Dark Elder for some reason can take more combat drugs than males without odding, which gives them a considerable edge in the gladiatorial fights. That, and they're naturally more graceful and acrobatic, among other things, such as attractiveness and the fact that most of the male sign up as beast masters instead. Witchcraft and Armageddon. Witches are the most common type of magic user in the world of CJ Carella's witchcraft and its sequel Armageddon, the end times. It serves as a generic term for anyone who has the supernatural quality the gift, but more specifically tends to refer to members of the Wix Association, a secret society of mages, seers, necromancers and god channelers who are united by their belief in the Wiccan religion. Basically, all that neo-pagan stuff about Wiccans being the modern descendants of ancient orders of matriarchal magic users who guided humanity in peace and harmony before being slaughtered and the survivors chased into the shadows by a corrupt, powerless but manipulative abramatic religion that's basically true in the witchcraft world. Chronicles of Ayers In the Chronicles of Ayers fan setting for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, the witch represents the oldest known form of magic user in the setting, and as such it gets an an entirely unique class, similar to the alchemist and dream caller. The heirs which can be best summarized as a melding of sorcerer and druid, with a dash of warlock. They are individuals with an innate ability to tap into the ambient magical energies of nature, drawing power from trees, rivers, and the motions of stars, sun and moon, and then shaping this through near religious beliefs and sacred precepts such as the rule of three and the twin paths. Witchcraft largely fell out of favor as the more potent, flexible and secular magic of wizardry developed, but persisted in the rural lands and on the fringes of society. Despite this, the practitioners of witchcraft survived everything fate threw at them. Even the anti-magical inquisition of the tyrant emperor Lankathy, and so they persist in as today. Witches are divided philosophically into two paths, 
which form the subclasses. The Maleficy, or Black Witch, practices the left-hand path, which champions the use of magic for personal freedom and self-advancement, and rejects the notion of things man ought not to know or even the more conventional definitions of good or evil. In contrast, the Fisa, or White Witch, follows the right-hand path, which is devoted to using magic to aid and benefit others. To start with, witches use wisdom as their spellcasting ability score, and have a pool of cantrips and spells known, similar to a sorcerer. They also have a pool of pseudo spells similar to the warlock, these are called hexes curses, offensive magics, only available to the maleficy, and charms, utility magics only available to the Fisa. Monstrugerals whether or not witches should be considered monstrugerals is actually a matter of some debate. On the one hand, they are, in many stories, beautiful women with supernatural powers and potentially dangerous in human traits, which is like the basic definition of a monstrugeral. On the other hand, when you get down to it, which can literally mean female arcanist, making them more of a class than a race, thus, like the Amazon. There are proponents and opponents for their inclusion. A good rule of thumb compromise would be if magic is something that theoretically any normal person and setting could pick up if given the opportunity or resources it's just a class. But if casting potential is a purely in the blood tray, a la Harry Potter, then magic users are a separate breed from regular humans and thus witches are technically monstergerals. In the Monster Girl Encyclopedia, two different Mamono embrace the witch as their basic concept. The first type is literally called the witch. These are once human sorceresses who fell for the blandishments of the Sabbath cult, failing to realize before it was too late that the eternal youth the Sabbath promoted was by transforming them into lollis. Indoctrinated utterly into the Sabbath cult as its loyal followers, Witches concern themselves both with finding a nice boyfriend and with conducting magical experiments to ultimately aid the Sabbath in taking over the world. The second type, the Dark Mage, are once human sorceresses who inadvertently turned themselves into monsters by conducting magical experiments that ultimately overloaded them with corruptive demonic magic. These witches are selfish hedonists who take a great pride in their voluptuous forms and will do anything to achieve their goal. Whilst it's not stated, one can imagine that the two witches don't get on at all. 